Or do we have any? Um, just just checking. Um, uh, okay, it's I guess, I guess I'm getting a I'm getting a box. Regular that's just, calendar. Okay, you you can be heard, Liz. So I excuse me. Okay, that's all right. Okay. Um, uh, first order of business is to um, is to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, let's see. I uh, so I have to actually pull up um, the minutes of the uh, last meeting of April of uh, May thirteenth, twenty twenty one. Gentlemen, have you had a chance to review the me the minutes? Yes. Okay. Any additions or corrections? No, I move they be approved. Okay, second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I, think, I think I heard you, Lee. Okay. Next. Um, Public participation. I'm, I'm having if there trouble. is anybody. Is there anybody from the public? Um, I, I don't believe we have anyone from the public here. I see only six persist, persist participants, and I believe that's the panel. Okay. All right. So let's move to the next item on the agenda. Unfortunately, I'm having trouble pulling up the agenda. Um, uh, motor vehicle abatement reports. Liz? First agenda is a is May 4th, 2021 to May 12th, 2021. Takes into account the two from the 2020 grant, uh, tax rolls and eight from the 2021 tax rolls. And we have a total of $2,859. You're showing us a different, um, a different screen than the one you're talking about. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I showed you two instead of one. Sorry about that. So that is... You know what? Where is it? There it is. Is this the one I want for yeah, the first that's one? It. That's it. Oh, it is. I'm sorry. I was looking at the top date. That is uh, May 4th to May 12th. We have three of them for the 2020 grand list. We have 20 of them for the 2021 tax rolls, I should say. And we have a total of 2,859 cents. Okay. Okay. Uh, move to approve. No. Our, move to approve our signatures on that on that set of abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that's approved. Next set is from May twentieth. May twentieth, so it's all on the same day. Okay. Total of seven hundred and fifty dollars and twenty six cents. All right. And it's two on the 2020 tax rolls, and we have eight on the 2021 tax rolls. All right. Any comments, gentlemen? No. All right. I move to approve that set of abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. These are from May 27th to the 28th. $15,473.56 is being asked to be abated for these vehicles. And we have uh, 67 abatements in total. Uh, this is the okay, first page. No. Many of them are rentals, as you see that EAN, EAN holding is enterprise. And um, some of them are from the town of Amherst, obviously. And the uh, Amherst College, University of Massachusetts, Hampshire College. These are exempt. Any questions, gentlemen? Yeah, uh, no. Um, uh, so the total is $15,473.56. Is that correct? Yes, it is. All right. Move to approve that set of abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. This is a uh, personal exemption that you approved uh, at the last meeting for okay. Mr. Chapman. Okay. Now, let, hang on a minute now. Hang on a minute now. I didn't. I, that I would be the second thing on the agenda where it oh, says it? sign real estate personal exemption abatement report for thir uh, $1,030. Okay, we we approved this, right, last time? Yes, you did. This is a summary. And I'm going to look into this with um, my liaison as to whether or not you really have to approve something twice. Yeah. It seems like it's very redundant. 
Um, I think that um, you know once if they're telling you in an open meeting plan that you approve something and don't even need to sign it and that we can use your signatures to approve something it seems redundant to ask you to approve it a second time all right hopefully this will be the last zoom meeting so we could um, so it will be less of a problem next time but um but it anyway. seems to be the area that i have the most difficulty myself because i'm saying oh we are bringing this up again all right it, it made it very confusing all right well so um, we approve i will tell you what the result of that is i'm sorry go ahead um, I, I will let you know what the result of my investigation is as to whether or not you truly have to approve a summary okay. of what you've already approved. So this is an abatement of $1,030 uh, for Mr. Alan Chapman? Yes, it is. Uh, and uh, I move that we uh, approve our signatures on that. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, the next one is... Um, This is one that you also approved at the last meeting for the solar exemption. This was a Scrivener's error. It was supposed to be exempt. And uh, we, you did vote to accept um, the adjustment at the last meeting. This is a summary. OK, that's an exemption in, uh, uh, that ch uh, changes the, uh, the tax bill. It removes the tax bill for a solar. OK, move to approve that. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 So that same thing would apply there, Liz. If you find out we don't have to do it twice, that wouldn't come up again like that. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Um, and, and virtually, you would only be asked to meet to make true adjudications instead of yeah. also approving the summary of those adjudications. Because a lot of this seems like accounting more than it does approving. Well, and I think that if they're saying that you've approved it in an open meeting, therefore that's the only approval necessary, it seems redundant to have you come back and approve the summary thereof. Right. Unless you really want to see the summary, which I have oh, no problem. No, the last okay. about <laughs> yeah, I understand. All right, the last on these, this agenda is um, the warrant from the collector, notice of commitment. And uh, let me bring that up a little bit bigger so everybody can see that I have that very small. I'm sorry. Let's see if I can get that a little bit bigger. Okay, so we have um, and sixty cents, and this is for um, One thousand four hundred and ninety-nine accounts to commit. So we did one of these last time. Is that correct? We signed one of these. You do these periodically, yes. Okay. And um, you know, this is pretty substantial. We're we're, uh, we're adding three hundred and fourteen thousand six hundred and sixty-five dollars and sixty cents. Okay, and so I see it's been labeled number two, right? Um, that's commitment number two. So okay. we get these commitments in an order and they just label them one commitment, one commitment, two commitment, okay. three, and so on. Um, so as they come in during the fiscal year, we, we do label them. So this is our commitment right. number two. Okay. And this is for the motor vehicle excise. And I was asking Teresa if this is our largest and she says, ah, not really. You know, we got a similar one back in December, I guess. When was the last time we had another one that was this size? So the first one she said is in January. Okay. Um, um, okay. So move to approve our signatures on this, the notice of commitment number two. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, and um, I just got the uh, commitment for, um, actually it's a um, signed personal property, eight of 58, it's a revised agenda. And let me see if I can grab that. I'm gonna stop sharing for just a moment, gentlemen. Is it in this file? Can you show me where? Okay.
All right, we're all set up for the last one. I was premature because I didn't have the most, the latest and greatest agenda. Um, this is the eight of 58 I'm gonna be bringing up and you may have some questions about that. I know I did. Um, okay, can everybody see this document? Yes. Okay. Does anybody have any questions as to what the eight of 58 is? Ms. LaFountain gave us a brief, um, a brief narrative here. Why don't you tell us Liz, what we're doing here? What mm -hmm. happens is when things are on the books for a period of time, and we've had things as it shows here since 2002, up into 2014, um, it's much like, you know how in credit cards, they have what they call a charge off. It doesn't mean that they don't pursue the debt but they don't consider it an active debt. So what they do is they put it in as a, uh, what they call eight of 58. It's, it's almost like a suspense. And we still go after these bills, um, but um, they put it in a separate category. And this has been recommended by our, by our auditors. So eight of 58 is not so eight items of 58 items. It's no, it's not. It's actually, um, okay. it's a reference to the statute, I believe. Oh, it's a, re a reference to the, the uh, Massachusetts law. And that's what eight of 58 is. So it's chapter 58 and it's section eight, I believe is what they're referencing. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah. I, um, I guess I'm surprised the finance department doesn't have a better policy. I mean, it seems going back to 2002 is a long time. They should have been on top of this sooner, but that's not your responsibility, Liz. Um, no, they, unfortunately yeah. that's, that's um, you know, one of those things that uh, an auditor might pick up and say, you know, this is an area I want you to address. And maybe this last auditor felt that this was something that was overlooked. Um, so in fairness to the finance department, a lot of times that's how it how it it's derived. Um, yeah. So I'm going to just go over a few things. Okay. Uh, these are the the, the uh, accounts that we're looking at. And these um, I don't know are, if you will. Liz, these are tax bills that haven't been paid, right? Correct. They're overdue. Okay. Right. Now, the fortunate thing is some of these I'm looking at, uh, you know, mm. um, unfortunately, some of these are out of business and mm. might be very difficult to track down. Um, I'm going to go on to the next ones. And if you're seeing the names repeat, it means it's on different tax periods or tax rolls. Some bigger ones there. Uh, these are for, um, looks like these are also for unpaid bills, so forth. Uh, is, is Sean live right now? Yes, he is. Hi, Sean. Mm -hmm. Tell me if I'm going too fast, gentlemen. No, I, I guess I have a general question from Sean. Is there a policy in finance to handle these? He, 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 may, he must no. not be live. He may have stepped away. Okay. Mm -hmm. May I? Some of these are very small amounts. Yeah, but most businesses have, you know, after a certain number of years, you just write them off. Write it off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or if you decide you proceed with legal action or something, you don't. Know, this seems very subjective to me. Um, Unfortunately, it is a, a standard practice that we do we do in um, all the towns. As a matter of fact, they do it in other states as well. I'm sorry, Ken, what do you mean by subjective? Well, I mean, I assume we're going after some taxpayers that don't pay by filing liens and stuff. Um, it depends on what the bill is. If it's a real estate bill, it's easy to put a lien. Um, if it's a business lien, I'm not, I'm not sure what the practice is for that. Or personal property. Or for vehicles, you know. Yeah. Well, I guess as a taxpayer, I'm. I mean, like, the, the vehicles are easier to do too, but the businesses yeah. are a little tougher because the, uh, the businesses, you know, if they go out and decide not to pay their bill, it's tough to, uh, to go after them, especially if they dissolve their LLC or corporation. No. Again, this is the finance committee area not ours well since since so what is our function here 
Um, your function is to determine whether or not you feel the justification to move these into that classification of A to 58. And that basically says that we're taking it out of the active bills and we're putting it in a uh, A to 58 category. And that category is bills that have been on the rolls for a lengthy period of time. Um, and they are pursuing them, but it's not on the active billing. So, and we're well, doing it solely based on the recommendation of the Finance Committee. Uh, not, this is a recommendation not, from the tax collector and the okay. auditors. How come um, the timing is such? I mean, we're going back to 2002. It seems like uh, uh, if this is an auditor issue uh, or accounting issue, that it would be addressed um, in, in a reasonable period of time. That's a long time. Um, I really can't speak to that. All I can mm -hmm. speak to is that um, you know, we have 106 bills here. Um, we have a total unpaid balance of $13,652.49. And uh, that's for uh, says personal property. So these are business personal property bills. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, um, we haven't seen this before. So um, I don't always. Think I don't recall this as being any kind of a routine thing. So I guess uh, I'm curious as to what it is we're approving here. In effect, um, you're, you're, in effect. If, I, if I go to the very top and look at Jennifer's um, narrative, this is what you're approving. Um, that, yeah. and let me just read it aloud. It says, it has been recommended by our auditors to reduce the amount of, of fiscal years active collection in the billing system. I am requesting to have fiscal years 2002 to 2014 personal property write off as eight of 58. And as I said, eight of 58 means chapter 58, section eight as uncollectible. This will remove them from our active outstanding list, but we can continue to collect the collect money towards them. It doesn't say we will, it just says we can. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, most collectors will pursue it. So what um, is the, so I guess, I, I'm sorry, and if I'm asking questions that we don't know the answers to. That's okay. You so know what, if I don't have the answers, I'll research it for you. So what is the effect of removing them from our active out, outstanding list? What is that? Um, you know, one of the things that a, the, a collection agency is often um, rated on is their collection rate. So by removing the eight of 58, it will increase the collection rate. <laughs> that seems like Mickey Mouse to me, but I, 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 I'm going solely on this recommendation, Rich. I mean, we're not approving who they're doing it to. We're just finances are recommended because the auditors say they should do it. And the, the bottom line is, I don't understand why it's coming to us, but apparently they get it into that account, they have to get the assessor, board of assessors to approve it. It's part of the formality. Notification. I guess I'm, I guess uh, these folks that it, these, I, I take it, were these all businesses or were there individuals? They are all businesses. Um, some of our owned individually, and I can certainly bring the, that list back up for you. So would there, is there a mechanism if, um, this person comes back, this business comes back in some way for there to be, um, for their tax bill to, to pop up. Oh, oh, yeah. If someone comes back um, and tries to operate, they're going to be flagged. Are some of these still operating or are they all defunct? Um, some of them may be still operating, you know, but it doesn't mean that that bill that they have is still on the active. As far as I know, though, at least most of these are inactive and not operating. Because I would think they have to get approvals from the town annually on some of these businesses and we should just- um, Usually for licensing and permits and things like that, they want to make sure that they're paid up in order to be issued those licenses or permits. But as far as doing business itself, I really can't speak to that. No, but I mean, you get a, a new license, they shouldn't get a new license if they owe taxes. That's one way that we do get a checks and balances is, is to, um, you know, hold up the licensing. A lot of times, uh, even some of these businesses that we had in town were applying for relief from COVID this year. Yeah. And I was able to uh, 
you know, bring to their attention that they hadn't filed a form of list with the assessor's office. And uh, the other agencies worked with me and we were able to get them back on the books. Good. Yep. Go to the latest year. I'm just curious. What the, what's the latest year? 2014, isn't it? Uh, well, no, it doesn't go that, that far. Let me see. Just a summary. So 2014 would be the latest. So go to the, six, six bills. Let's go see to if the I can. Detail for that for me. I uh, see the only. They're giving me summaries. You see. Yeah, for keep each year. Don't, don't come uh, to them. It should be. For that. Let's see. You're almost there. Right A lot there. of pages. Number seventeen up there. I think it's like seventeen. All right, we'll take your word for it. Ah, let's see. What year is this? That's fourteen. It is 14. Oh, there it is on the bottom. I expect Good. things like that on the top, don't you? Can anybody recognize any of those people? Are they all out of business? Um, mm -hmm. Tran, Yen. I don't right. Go to, go to 16, Liz, please. Page 16, sure. Well, that's not any good. Uh, go back to 17. I don't understand. Let's you mean see. 14? Seven. Oh, I see six bills of, okay. There are only yeah. six bills. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, gentlemen? Um, do we fully understand what we're doing here? Um, what, 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 what I understand is that we're approving accounting uh, recommendation. recommendation, right? And I don't know why we're involved in approving that, except maybe just the notification. They're notifying us that they're doing it. Mm, no, I think it's a checks and balance that has to happen as part of this process. Okay. One okay. Other, I yeah. guess I'll go on the, the recommendation from the finance committee, but Liz, for the okay. next meeting... Okay. Now, Ken, you keep referring to the finance committee, and I don't know where they where. No, I mean the finance department, this collector, okay. assistant treasurer, this finance sure. department person. Ken, Sean, up... Sean is back. Back, you can ask him your oh. question. Uh, Sean. Yeah, sorry, I had to take a call real quick. Oh, um, no problem. No, we were just going to tap your knowledge. Sure. We're looking at these. Um, is there a policy? It doesn't seem if there is a policy, they're adhering to it. These are about the um, the accounts that are being written off as uncollectible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and I explain that I they're in Chapter Fifty Eight, Subsection se Subsection Eight. And yeah, let me um, let me check with our. It's sort of a joint effort by the treasurer and the collector. Um, let me see what they've done in the past. I, I mean, sometimes I think they try to pursue them until they receive some sort of indication that they're really it's going to be unlikely, and that's when they write them off. But let me um, let me get their input, and I can send it. I can just email that to the board just as an informational piece to you all after so you have a sense of how they're how that process works so can and, I, and sean we're trying to understand what is our role and why are we involved why are you involved in terms of um waiving it uh, approving the recommendation yes um yeah i can try to see what the statute is i, I mean my guess is because you sort of help create the list that has to be collected that you also have to be involved in the sort of removing of items from that list, um, which okay. is why it's being brought back to you. Okay. Um, so are we, uh, perhaps we're acting out of an abundance of caution here, but um, maybe we want to wait before we approve this? When's your next meeting? Is it not till July? Well, um, actually, they were going to I was going to say that's part of our discussion today about summer hours, gentlemen. We haven't got to that discussion yet. Did you want to mention it? Well, I was going to suggest that we meet July or August, but not both. Yeah, Sean, I'm I'm comfortable. If you're comfortable, they're doing the right thing, and we're doing the right thing to vote on this. But yeah, if you guys have, if you have um, two minutes, I can go talk to the collector. She's right outside. I can just kind of, um, in the, I just in make the sure meantime, no time what I can do is I can bring up that chapter for you, gentlemen, that way we can review it together while he's checking with her. No, I'm I'm gonna, gonna, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'll, I'll okay. Be, <laughs> that's okay. I'll be right back. Okay. okay. We can keep going, Liz. Okay. okay. Very good. 
All right, so um, we'll revisit that. The next one, let's see. I think that's it, because we just did this one. Yep. And all we're doing right now is we're going to go to and stop sharing for just a moment so I can take that down. Um, I'm going to go to the um, Discuss. survey because um, I want to show you the latest iteration of the survey. So let me just make sure is this, I just want to make sure that this is on the agenda. I yes, um, yes is. it is. Yeah, it's okay. a Discuss residential exemption. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, and basically, uh, where we are with this residential exemption study is to uh, get the survey off and launched. I'm so excited to get that done. And I'm going to bring it up for you so that you can all see what we're going to be putting out to the public. The only thing that's missing from this is the link. Um, this is what we sent or we are sending to Paul to approve so that we can launch it out to the public. So let me bring it up for you. Kind of. Uh... There we go. Can you see that now, gentlemen? You magnify. I certainly can. For myself as well as everybody else. <laughs> Is that big enough or would you like it a little bit bigger? Yeah, bigger. Okay. There we go. So as you see at the top. Liz, it's mm -hmm. not changing on our screen. <laughs> it's not changing on your screen as far as the size? Right. I don't, I have it at 125 on mine. Maybe, maybe a little bit bigger. Fresh or something to get it to us? Uh, it's been one of those issues that um, Serge has been working with me. Uh, okay. I'm going to try to close it and I'm going to try to bring it up again. Okay. Yeah, th this didn't get included in our attachments. Um, you know what? I'm sorry about that, gentlemen. I That's thought that, that went out to you. Did we not send you that a copy of the survey yet? Did, no. unless, unless Lee or Ken thought no. I. Yeah. Okay. I didn't say no. no. All right. Well, obviously, if there's anything on here that you want me to point out to the selectman, I mean to the uh, town manager, as far as the uh, any edits that you would like to have done, let me know. I'd be glad to um, to relay them. Come on. Shame. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now it's. That look a little clearer, <laughs> gentlemen. I hope so, because I really now can't. Got, now I've got half of it. Well, it's not the survey. Or oh, yes, it is a survey. But you're right. Yeah. We only have half. Yeah, you might have to reduce it now. <laughs> yeah, Do you all want me to say? No, can't win sometimes. Do you all want me okay. to give you a quick update on? Um, I just yeah. spoke with. So I just spoke yeah, with our collector. Absolutely. Um, so that Liz, that that was personal property, right? That eight of fifty-eight. Yes, it uh, was. Okay. Yeah, um, business personal property. So yeah, Jen was saying that they do try to keep it, um, you know, no older than five years, but she did say with personal property, there was a time where you, um, she didn't think you could write stuff off if the, if it was, if the entity was still in business. Um, so she thinks that might've been part of why that some of those really old ones were still there. Um, but she said this in particular is brought forward because the auditors periodically check it and, and they make recommendations on things that they feel should be waived um, and she confirmed that again because you sort of identify the list of taxes to be collected um, that's why it's being brought back to you to kind of take these ones off as uncollectible um, and there is not a specific time constraint so you don't have to vote in june um, if you don't want to we just want to have it done before the next before the next audit cycle happens so that the auditors can see that that list was cleaned up um, but i don't think there's anything um, sort of controversial about it either so this is not an annual cleanup. This is. I think they want to do it annually, or they want to rotate every other year between um, excise and and personal property. Um, so they, but they do want to. That's you know sometimes, especially this past year, things can kind of get lost. But they do want to try to keep it, um, you know, anything older than five years to clean those things up. So can you explain? I'm sorry. <laughs> Operationally, what are we doing? What what does it mean when we do this? So you're taking something that um, is on essentially like an accounts receivable list of us going, you know, on our books as a um, being owed to us, and you're waving it off of our books because it's no longer um, certain that we're going to collect it um, because of a variety of reasons. Some of them being age, but, uh, possibly a business going out. Um, there's different reasons for each of them, but um, 
you're essentially taking something off of our list to collect. Okay, um, so but we are, but they are still going to try to pursue it. It's just sort of the official on the books list um, that these are the chart, the accounts that they don't feel um, that mm -hmm. they, they feel doubt about. Um, and if you want, we could also, you know, if you don't feel comfortable voting today, we could try to have like the treasurer and collector come to the next meeting too and talk about some of these if that's helpful. So let me ask you this. Uh, let's just say I'm on this list. I have one of the businesses, one of the businesses that I ran into the ground um, went out of business. I come back into town as the Richard Morse Sushi Bar and Storm Door Company. Do, do, is there some mechanism in which my prior identity, my prior business identity comes up and the town wants me to pay, uh, pay off on, a, on these? On you know, I, I don't have the answer. Um, that would be something we'd want to ask the collector and the treasurer about what sort of data they collect when um, they bill people to like, and if you have a prior outstanding amount, do you have to pay that first um, before you're allowed, you know, before you pay the newest amount? Um, so we could get that, that answered uh, to your sushi business. Um, <laughs> um, Rich, Rich, I doubt if you have a different entity, they're not going to be able to go after the new entity. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I, mean, I think I, I think guess, it depends in some ways how it's set up too. If it's you know if you're a if um you know if you're a single owner versus something that's incorporated versus you know different uh, types of in, uh, starting a business it, that may make a difference as well. But um, I don't want to give you a definitive answer because I don't know. So so this is this is I, I take it that this is affecting somebody's performance. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I'm Ken's laughing because I can't. I don't really understand what it is that we're uh, affecting here, or what it is that we're enabling, or I, I can't really understand what it is that we're doing. I, you're you're essentially, you know, we have, again we have a an account receivable amount for amounts owed to the town, and you're essentially lo reducing it by the amount of these accounts as no longer being officially owed to the town um, on on our sort of financial statements. Um, but again, Jen, Jen and, and the treasurer said that, that they're still obviously going to try to pursue it. But again, the, when it gets to this level, you know, the one from 2002, mm -hmm. you know, almost 20 years old. Um, Sounds it's, impossible. It's, it's, we're it looking at, me. <laughs> and we're looking at like 15 years of unpaid bills, right? Right. That's what, right. what was the total amount, Liz? I'll bring it back up for you. Because um, again, in the grand scheme of things, our collector's office um, and our treasurer's office do a great job collecting they do. Um, we, we have a very, they're very, high collection they're very rate diligent year. for trying to get those tax dollars. Yeah. This is this you. is this is more of a housekeeping item um, you, to, to clean up our books. You're you're saying this we're good versus relative to other municipalities. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we have a just a we have a, I think it's like a 98 to 99 percent collection rate, right. which is um, it's an outstanding know, collection it's rate. It's pretty strong. Yeah. Okay. Especially on the, some of these hard times that we've been through in the last year, um, I tell you, they work really hard getting the money. I listen to, to to the staff in the tax office and the treasurer every day. All right. So the total is the thirteen thousand six fifty two. Um, yes, it is. Okay. Thirteen thousand six hundred fifty two dollars and forty nine cents for one hundred and six accounts of business personal property. Over over over. From two thousand and two um, fiscal year two thousand and two to two thousand and fourteen. So and what is twelve years? So that's yeah. an average of about a. Uh, a little over a thousand dollars a year yeah yeah and out of you know 50 to 60 million dollars of taxes um, okay. assessed each year you know it's a very small amount and, and again if you feel uncomfortable today I, I don't have any you know problem with us we could put it on the next agenda when the collector and the treasurer can be here um and if you wanted more detail about you know you know some of the specific reasons why some uh, you know an account's on this list they, they probably can provide more of that i'm fine rich with us yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine now too. All right. Uh, but but your question about uh, Rich, your question about uh, you know coming back in under another entity. Um, it's a good uh, question. Uh, yeah, Shana, it, it, you might put ask that question if there's. Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can certainly that, ask that. that. Yeah. Right. But but I'm fine with voting on this. So do I, I have a motion? Uh, move to approve the. Uh, what what do we call it? This would be. Um, Chapter uh, 58, Section 8, uh, Uncollectibles. 
uh, their personal property being moved from active tax act, act, active collectibles to uncollectibles. Yeah. So uh, let me let me bring up the word the, the wording that that Jen used. I think that's probably the best. Um, she refers to it as um, there's active for collection in the billing system to uncollectible. Yeah, it's the fiscal years 2002 through 2014 personal property write off as of eight of 58 uncollectible. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. I, I guess a side note is, Sean, is there also something like this for real estate? Um, yes. So um, I don't think so for real estate, but there is for excise. I think I think when I asked, um, I just talked to the collector a minute ago, I think she said we're not allowed to do it for real estate. Um, but I will, I'll double check that as well. What we do for the real estate is we put liens against their property. So they really can't get out of it because if they okay. don't pay their bill, then we put a lien on the, uh, okay. they call it a taking on yeah. the uh, Hampshire Registry of Deeds. So if you ever look on the Hampshire Registry of Deeds and you see the refer reference to taking, it doesn't mean that we took something. It means that we're putting notice on the land records that they're outstanding. So if, for instance, that property should change hands, we get that, that, that tax, those tax dollars. So I continue to be astounded by what sort of matters of first impression that we get in this otherwise mundane uh, oh. service function that we have, so. <laughs> What do you mean by that, Rich? Well, I mean we hadn't seen we hadn't seen this before. And oh, I, I, okay. I think this is year five for me, or so. I just okay. Yeah, she said it, she said this one may have been a while since they last cleaned it up, and that's okay. why the auditors flagged it. Yeah. Okay. Looks like it's been twenty years, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, no, fifth fifteen. All right, they said five years old. That's how long they said. <laughs> all right. Good. What's next, Liz? You were going over the survey. So we're ready to do this again next year, Sean, if you wanted to uh, do it again. Hopefully it's very much, much smaller the next time. All right. Okay. Um, did you want me to go back to the survey, gentlemen? Was there any yeah. questions about that? Certainly. Is that big enough for you all to see? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you're looking at the top of the, the survey, what you're going to see is the owner's name. Um, you're going to see the mailing address. Then below it, you're going to see the property location. To the right, you're going to see the, the property identification number that they need to enter. It's a unique number, and that's what they'll need to enter um, if they do it online. If uh, they return this survey, the property identification number is going to be there to make it easy for the data entry person to put it in. But David had a genius idea. He said, why not put the exemption code that we have to show the status we have this property in now? So if someone comes back with it and says, yes, I'm owner occupied and we have it listed as owner occupied, we don't even have to enter that field. So that'll be something we get to get out of. Um, basically what we're asking is for folks to volunteer the information and it's asking, um, did you own and occupy this property as the principal residence in the town of Amherst January 1st of 2021? Yes or no? And then it goes on to uh, section one, and this is for the multifamilies. I might put a space in between there. That's kind of smushed together a bit. Um, but if there's anything else that you yeah, see. Yeah, I don't think that's right. Okay. Because it, it's not just for multifamily. We want residential, single family that's rented too. Right. So Liz and I and David spoke about this and we're not, so the, the thing we need to do this survey or to do the analysis is really um, number one, right, Liz? Right. Yes. Question number one. Yeah, um, that's a key these other These other questions are um, helpful, but if we don't send the survey to everyone, we're not quite sure how helpful the data is. And the plan wasn't to send the survey to everybody. The plan was only to send the survey to um, sort of identified properties that we don't have in from, you know, we don't have the, the answer to number one on. Um, okay. So we're not, you know, I think we, we're not 100% positive, we're definitely gonna go with all these questions, because we need to, like, if we get it, if we get the answers to that, but it's only on 1400 properties, or, um, you know, does what does that tell us? Um, we're not sure. Okay. <laughs> so, no, um, that's, fine. that's a good point. I mean, because if, if the council wants more, if they want to say, okay, well, how many houses in 
Amherst are rented to college students, you're saying we're going to have to do a survey again for everybody. Yeah, I mean, you might have to send so, it to everybody. And, yeah. and, and so this information is, you know, inf inf uh, it could be really useful or informational. Um, but yeah, if we don't send the survey to everyone, then it, we're not sure if it's going to, it'll be limited yeah. in terms of how you can extrapolate okay. it. Then I'd be inclined just to delete everything but one then. And I think that's Liz was sort of so over here where you were headed originally. Um, yeah, I can bring up the other one as well, because that is the one that we had initially. And because the other thing that this we weren't planning on this going to was apartment complexes, which I would think that would be we'd want this to go to apartment yeah, complexes well, as well to to really find out, you know, let's just have number one then. Okay, let me bring up the, the revision that I had before. Were we were we legally entitled to ask the information in two, three, four, five? I felt a little uncomfortable about it. I'll be well. I was a little nervous about like the, um, the college student one in particular. Um, but you're right. Some of these, I don't, you know, if it's voluntary, maybe. But I don't know if we've gotten a confirmation that there's any just things we have to be careful about when we ask this type of information. So Liz, I don't think you have to bring up a different survey. We'll just have number one. That's the only question. So okay. Ken, you are, so you're, you're, just so I understand. So you are, so you are indicating your desire that the rest of the, that section one be out, right? Yeah, take it to section one, two through seven be deleted. Okay. Just okay. have question one only. So then, is this going to be included with the tax bill? No. Uh, no, this is going to be a separate mailing, right, Liz? That's correct. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm a little confused. On but it, it's only going again. The one reason why it's not including the tax bill is it's only going to. Um, how how was the list identified, Liz? Of who it's going to? Is it just ones that we don't have the information in the system already about? Well, one of the things that um, we're still in discussion about is who go, who is going to get this survey. Um, you know, I've got some recommendations from David as to who he feels we should send it out to, and it greatly expanded the number. So I, I really need to get an idea of the scope of how many people. I have the, the list ready to go. I just need to know how many we're going to narrow it down to. If we're only going to narrow it down to um, folks that have an in-town address and folks that do not have a, um, a management company, um, I think those probably easily be removed from the list. For instance, the ones that are the large apartments, we know. The ones that are... Uh, care of Kaneta, uh, I mean, not Kaneta, um, Kendrick Associates, there's a large number of those. We have those that are managed by Mr. Baum. We have those that are managed by W.D. Coles. We have those that are managed by Jones Group. Those are easily identified as rental properties. So, it, you know, getting some of those out, including the rental homes, because a lot of the, the residential homes are um, occupied by students as well as you know. Um, I think we can weed those out safely um oh, so are we um we i i think i saw no explanation as to why we want this information this is to um, help us do the um, analysis of, I, um so this is we need this to to update the analysis of how the residential exemption will impact the town um we need to have a, a better sense of how many so properties are not owner occupied i um, sort of get it but yeah. but i'm i guess what i'm saying is the the, the person receiving the mail I don't I see just it. found I, the one that I did uh, last time with the with the board. Would you like to see it? Can you see it up there now? Uh, this is what we had chosen for verbiage last time we got together. So Rich, that addresses your question, the first paragraph. Okay. All right, fine. Fine. Does that does that still work or did you have any edits or comments for that? No, I'm still a little confused. How do they find that PDI or PID or whatever it is? The PID will be populated on the the survey letter that goes out to them and what that would it that's a unique id that's within the mass appraisal system okay so, um, so it'd be a little harder bill. for someone to kind of figure out if they wanted to falsify a survey okay so if they send it back mail there it's all they have to do is check yes or no correct and, and just pop it in the mail or pop it in the outbox or but send it via carrier pigeon as long as it gets go online they have to copy the number from the mailing that's document. correct okay. that's correct that's why it says um use your assigned property ID. Got it. That's what that PID stands for. And okay. I outlined it in uh, the acronym so that they would know. So just, just anticipating here, and since Sean is here, and Ken and, I, Ken and I went back and forth, went, had a little back and forth on this, and actually I'd love to agree with Ken on this. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Are we going to be expect? Are we going to be expected? Is the principal assessor and the board going to be expected to have a recommendation this fall about an exempt a residential exemption, Sean? Um, so I would just I would hold on that. I think what we want to do is get the report and the data together and get that to you to review, um, and then we can discuss. I mean, if the data. I think it's up for you to decide if you want to have a recommendation, if the data, you know, shows like a, you know, really extreme impact on apartment complexes or really extreme impact on, um, you know, some element, and you feel that that's not right or not, you know, and you're, you know, based on whatever the board decides that you don't agree with it, then you could choose to either recommend or not recommend, you know, based on how you feel about it. Um, I don't think you have to, though. I think the main thing is we want you to kind of review the the report that we put together and give us feedback on it. You know, does it, do we feel like it addresses everything that we needed to address um, before it then goes off to the council? Okay. Cause Ken, I can, can't think Ken thinks feels that if I'm, uh, he can speak for himself obviously, but I think he feels as though uh, our presenting the data is, is our function and that's it. Well, I'm we trying to remember what David did in the past. No, um, I, yeah, but, uh, did, but but did he make a recommendation or did he just uh, speak about what other um, uh, towns had done um, and why? Um, I don't remember, you know, specifically I, if a recommendation was made. I guess, Sean, I, the question I have is, are you going to talk or stay, uh, Paul going to talk to the council to get their feedback before you send them the report? Yep. Um, sorry. I mean, yeah, we actually... Um... We have a memo that I reviewed with Dave and, and Liz um, last week, and, I, and I'll you know we're gonna I'll send you a copy of it too just for your records. Um, okay. I'm sending we're gonna send the survey and the memo to Paul, get his final review, and then that um, the, the memo in particular is gonna go off to the um, to the council. And essentially, what the memo does is just outline where we are as of today, what we're doing. Um, you know, what information we're trying to seek and then sort of puts it out there. Like if you have any questions or you know, concerns that you don't feel are gonna be addressed by this process to, to let us know directly. Um, right. And we're gonna go from there, but we're gonna get that out, um, get that to Paul this week and hope we're a little behind schedule from where I wanted to be, but um, get it to Paul this week and try to get to the council next week. Okay. Cause well, it's really the council and this is a redistribution of taxes. It's not new taxes. Right. So it's solely what does the council want to know to decide if or do they want to redistribute taxes? Right. Yeah. And what I've and you, what you'll see, and we've talked about a little bit, like if the council, you know, we're going to make a sort of a preliminary report to the council. And then I think what I'm, we're going to recommend to the council is before you decide anything, you know, either you can decide no, if you don't, if they don't like it, um, if it looks like a possibility, something that they would consider, then they should conduct, a, you know, or they and meaning us in the town and them need to conduct a some sort of public engagement process because obviously it could have um, oh you know pretty big ramifications oh, that, yeah. that that we need to make sure everyone's informed and people have a chance to weigh in and um, there's probably something in the charter that requires you know some sort of hearing yeah. um so you know we're planning us to kind of give a preliminary report in september if it's something they decide they want to move forward with then we would have to do a couple months of public engagement before they would come back and, and potentially vote on it in the fall um, yeah. or later in uh, late fall early winter so um, yeah, so that's why we want to get moving because we want to make sure there's plenty of time for them to consider it uh, before they set the tax rate. Otherwise, you know, then it might be another year before we do this. Yeah. That's good. Okay, gentlemen, I don't think I have anything else on the agenda. Okay, I just um, wanted to uh, indicate that I have, uh, I have a, I have been alerted to the fact uh, that in the la that there have been, um, that there are currently, and I'm, I don't wanna raise this for discussion, I wanna raise this as a potential agenda item sometime in the future. Apparently there are, our homes are selling at something like 30 to 40% above assessed value right now over the last three or four months. Bidding wars. Yes, so I'm just, I'm just indicating that um, um, I, I just wonder what uh, whether that raises any questions in town or with the board of assessors or with the town council um, about uh, what's happening. But apparently um, it's um, 
Yeah, it's significantly above assessed value that homes are selling right now. Yes, it is. Now that right now that's just that's just interesting, but I'm just wondering um, what that uh, means. Um, I just went over this actually with a taxpayer and um, well, actually I'm presenting it to a couple of folks that we had at Greenleaf that are disputing the adjustment made on their abatements. And one of the things that uh, happens is if a residential property exceeds 10% sales analysis um, increase, then we are obliged to change the assessment to fall in line with the other properties and we have to increase their assessment. The same thing as if it falls below 10%. You You're saying, you, mean a, you mean a class, right, Liz? Like a, if a an, classification if a, if of a, property. So for instance, so, uh, a single family uh, home is a classification. So a the whole class family, goes? Yes, the whole, the whole class. class goes. The whole class goes. Now is that analysis, Liz, based on a year's worth of sales? Or yes, how, it is. Okay, so if, if in a year's worth of sales, it's 10% higher than what you thought it was going to be. You have to update the entire class um, to where it should be, right? To fall within the margin. Well, at least to be acceptable to the, the DRS, I may not go a whole 10%, but right. you know, it so has to be adjusted to yeah. be within the range that's acceptable. Because so that is on our radar. Be, yeah. Liz and I spoke about that yesterday, actually, right, Liz? We talked about- Yes, we did. Yeah. yeah. So what is, what is the, what is the, um, what is the decision point? Where is the, when we, when we give this information to the Department of uh, Revenue Services every year, they will, um, we will have to show them that we've adjusted our, our tables for assessment accordingly and substantiate we've made a uh, assessment adjustment for that class of property. Um, if it's industrial or commercial, it has to exceed 15% up or down. So would that be the fall, Liz, when we do the tax, when we set the work on the tax rate and all the reports? Is that when the analysis is sort of completed? It is in the fall, yes. Okay. Yeah, to, be think, to be effective and the calendar year, is that it? It would be effective for the following fiscal year, yes. Fiscal yeah, year. I, I think David used to do this behind the scenes very often. You know, he'd look at it every year and sometimes, I think last year he actually increased them. I mean, it was just- uh, Last year I did, I increased them, yes. Okay, yeah. So it's not something new or unique, it's just- No, like, yeah, it's, been, I mean, the, it's been in place for quite a while. Right. The housing but, market's um, a little unique though. I think, I mean, it's always been going up, but I think the the, yeah. um, the housing market mind. the last few months has been really, uh, you know, everywhere has been really um, unusual in terms of how fast it's it's going up. Um, so that, it, to, to Rich's point, it could be sort of a, um, if we have to raise sort of the across the board values, it could be sort of a shock to some people. Yes. Um, but but, but that's, it might it might have the effect of lowering the rate, correct? Right. It would it could lower the it could end up lowering the tax usually rate. Usually, if it's yeah. usually if there's a substantial increase to the base, but so many components go into the rate. Let's face it, how much the state the Commonwealth provides, um, and and reimbursement funding. Um, no, but, you, but your point's right, Rich, that, you know, if the value goes up, but we still need the same amount of money to run government, that the, the rate will go down, which is good. We, I mean, in some ways, right. that's good. We, we like the rate to go down, too. So, so I'm sorry, am I, um, is this um, in context, is what's been happening in the last three or four months of something that's a significant, significantly, I mean, these sales are significantly over the assessed value. That's right. something, that's something that's, um, uh, noticeable, right? It's 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 going to be the cumulative issue, that's going to right? determine what happens. It's going to be the cumulative of sales that's going to determine what happens in each class. Okay. Uh, I can give you more of a breakdown of that for our next meeting if you'd like. It'd be uh, be interesting. Sure. Mm -hmm. well, what about our next meeting? Um, well, uh, David had recommended that you take some time off for the summer, um, okay. but I do have some some. Um, uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to Sean if he wants to share about the uh, management portion of this sort of thing. Um, but other than that, um, I'm all ears. What do you want to do, gentlemen? Well, I um, uh, well, I I was going to suggest July or August, but not both. Yeah, okay. July would be better for me. Okay. Yeah, I'm all right if it's Zoom. I'm if it's in person, I probably can't make them. Okay. Well, 
Um, I'm, I was told by the manager this morning, by manager's office, excuse me, not the manager, um, that uh, we may have to have, um, and Sean can contradict me on this, um, if we have a July meeting, we may need to have two people physically in the building. Is that, is that right? Yes, because we're, we're going as back to business as usual, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I thought what he said earlier today, and we can confirm, is that the chair needs to be present. Um, and I think you need a um, the uh, oh. quorum of the committee present. And then okay. so so it's possible if Lee and Rich were here that Ken might be able to participate remotely, but we have, again, we'll have to double check that. I think that's what he said this morning. Okay, so our alternatives are, I'm gonna suggest alternatives of July 8th or August 12th, but not both. July 8th works for me. July 8th works for me. Okay, go for it. Okay, all right, so. And so we'll assume that um, that after that we go to September something. Right. All right. But um, so I have a, to... a general question: Will committee meetings still be on Zoom, even if they're meeting in person, or not? So I think it depends where it is. Um, this is something that we're sort of actively working on. Is um, right now there's sort of one room set up to be hybrid and that's the the town council's meeting room um so meetings that are in that room theoretically could be on zoom and in person i don't think any other rooms right now are set up to do that so they would be they would be just in person like the um you know the way it was done in the past i mean i i would like to suggest that based on my meeting viewing of the other t committee's meetings our board is particularly <laughs> Um, adversely affected by these Zoom meetings. We're just better off in person um, because we have to sign things. You know, it's somebody signing them for us. Someone is, yeah. <laughs> but it would be better if we were in person. So, yeah. um, but um, you know, it would be nice if we could do it in the town in the meeting room downstairs. Yeah, uh, you only you only need to use the town council room if you want to try to make them. Um, like, like Ken asked if we could want to have them on Zoom at the same time. If you're not going to go that route, um, you know, it's possible where Ken maybe could just call in. Um, yeah, that's fine with me. I don't need to be on Zoom. I mean, just call in's fine. Can we can we operate a Zoom meeting in that room, Sean? I don't think the technology is set up to do because there's there's more when you do a hybrid meeting with Zoom at the same time. There's a whole lot of other technology considerations around microphones and things like that. So you're not getting interference and, and it's more complex than just sort of setting up a computer. Um, I mean, if we're, we've had meetings with a quorum before where we didn't have the third person. Yeah. And if yeah. we're only talking about Ken missing one meeting, I think yeah, we, right. we can manage. Right. Yep. So, and I, I, I'm assuming that Lee has been reappointed. Is that correct? No, Rich, it's me. Oh, it's you. Yeah. I keep getting. <laughs> no, I haven't heard anything. Um, Sean, do we know anything about um, whether we're going to have our three members? I can, I can ask. I'll ask um, Paul where the appointment is. So it's for yeah. Ken. Okay. Ken Ken's golden coach turns into a pumpkin at the end of the month. If, uh, <laughs> if uh, at the end of June, yes, June thirtieth. Yeah. All right, I'll email him right now. Okay. All right. So we're going to assume uh, we're going to assume that we have Ken, but we don't know. Well, you won't need me for July anyway. Okay, all right. Okay, and so Lee has one more year, is that right? Yeah, should have okay. one more year. All right, and I've got two, so I think. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. okay. And Sean, I'm, I'm gonna need a parking sticker too. Okay. Uh, oh, when you start coming in, yeah. Um, I think, I'll mention that. Anybody else need it? I, yeah. uh, I just I feed the meter, but okay. um, I don't know. all right. I'll mention it to the um, town clerk. I think the town clerk. Uh, so I think those. usually it's Jen Lafollette. Uh, she was the one that handed me my pass. Yeah. Uh, if I should get them, gentlemen, I'll make sure I distribute them to you, even if I have to drop them off. Okay, okay you'll take you'll just, take care of that, Liz. I'll right, take good. care of that. So just Thank you, Liz. Anticipating, no problem. Anticipating, what is it that we're going to need to discuss about the survey? in either uh, July or September? Um, if 
I have to run in a, a minute, but if you're okay with it, I think what we'd like to do is just go forward with this. We'll go with that one question. If there's any major changes, we'll let you know. But otherwise, I think we just want to get the survey out yep. um, unless there, unless you want to see it one more time. But I think- I can certainly bring it back up on the screen one more uh, time, uh, gentlemen. Uh, we're cause, all set. We're yeah, because we kind of want to do it. Um, we kind of want to do it soon. I'll be honest. I think the, uh, yeah, we, we want to get it done soon because we've got to get try to get the analysis done over the summer. So- Right. Um, do you need a formal motion from the board about the survey? I don't think so. Do you, Liz, do you think we need a... I, no, I mean, because you're not making any judgment. You're just discussing yeah. it and okay. making sure that it is being presented to the, the, town, the, right. the town manager in the format that you'd like to see it presented. Yeah, and I think we can, I mean, we can always sort of gather data. I don't think we, um, I mean, you, you're welcome to if you want to. I just don't think it's necessary. If you like, gentlemen, I can uh, email you the, the latest version we just brought up so that you can have a look at it. Would you like that? That'd be fine. Okay. okay. Yep. I'd be glad to do that. Um, but it's, so it's intended to go out when? Uh, so if we get it to Paul this week and get it to the council next week, um, probably leave, I would say late June, early July would be our hope to get it out and then probably allow, um, I don't know, Liz, what do you think, a few weeks for people to return it? Um, I have never done a survey here in Amherst. I don't know how responsive. I can res resource to um, Nate and Brianna in the planning and IT departments to determine how well they had their surveys respond. Because mm -hmm. um, I was also going to ask them about you know processing the surveys. How many people yeah. and how many hours did it take to process? Yeah, uh, yeah. we don't we don't need a hundred. I mean, hundred percent would be great. We don't need a hundred percent return rate because it's it's really just trying to get our estimates as, that's right as, we, we just need a reasonable response in order to get a good sample and what yeah. what is that what's the sample uh, size that it should be responded i figured i'd compare it to what happened in other communities okay. for the surveys that came back for the residential exemption to didn't see how david, well that they were responded didn't david mention that last time we got like 50 to 60 percent back and that was good mm -hmm. something like that yeah, yeah. it Especially was a pretty good response june and july yeah and so, Rich, I don't think we're we have much of a role until September anyway, because they the survey doesn't tell us much. It's after they it's the response, it. yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. And hopefully, we'll get some stat from data from other resources to help support the data, such such as you know the U.S. Census, I believe, was um, in process when we had COVID. I mean, so I, just just so can... I'm, just so it's clear, I, if I, I'd love to be in the uh, in the position that Ken is advocating where we just stay out of it. But um, so, um, and just just facilitate the- Just the facts. Data, yes. Just present the data, yeah. But my recollection is, is that every year, David made a recommendation about the, the, the split rate yep. and also the residential exemption. But that, that's my recollection of how- No, yeah. that's true, that's true. Okay. Okay. All right. Move to adjourn. Thank you all. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Have aye. a good summer. July 8th at 11 a.m. July yes, 8th sir. at 11 a.m. We'll see you there. All right. Thank Let you. me know if you have any questions and I'll send out that survey to you, gentlemen. Thank you, Elizabeth. Appreciate You're it. Welcome. Yep. Thank bye -bye. you. Enjoy bye. your summer. Thanks. Yeah, you too.